I now call upon the Honorable Sir Julius Chen. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, uh, Your Excellency, the Governor General, Chief Justice, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, and former Prime Ministers, Honorable Members. <clears throat> I want to acknowledge, and I think I speak on behalf of the people of Papua New Guinea, the uh, uh, accord given to the first prime minister of this country, and I'm very, very certain that uh, Lady Veronica and his family and her family really appreciate such a dignified farewell to a good Papua New Guinea. Today, Mr. Speaker, I want to somehow capture, somehow explain what the loss of the last week has meant to me and should, I think, meant to the country. Our country has lost a champion in Michael Tomare. I have lost a dear friend and colleague. It is hard to believe Sir Michael has been such a part of Papua New Guinea, such a part of my life. And now he's gone. But what a life he lived. Who could have foreseen that the birth of a man-child in Rabao nearly 85 years ago was the beginning of a journey that would not only carry the man-child for a tumultuous and exciting life, but would as well lead to the birth of a new nation, a nation unlike any other nation ever born in the history of the world. But those events were fated to occur when Michael Somare was born in Rabaul on 9th April 1936 and began a remarkable life journey over the course of the next 85 years. And you know, I was there for much of that trip. Well, we go back a bit, Sir Michael and I. I first met Sir Michael when we were both running for the election to the Second House of Assembly in 1968. <coughs> 53 years ago now. For 53 years, Sir Michael and I went through the triumphs and the tragedies, not only of politics, but of life itself. For 53 years, we laughed together, and yes, many times cried together. But even, in fact, especially, during the tough times, Sir Michael always knew that he had my shoulder to lean on, and I always knew I had his shoulder to lean on. So Michael was a pillar of strength for me, and I hope I was a source of strength for him. You know, I believe some men are born <clears throat> for a higher purpose. There are some men who are born to fly, who are fated to soar above the crowd, Sir Michael was such a man. He was an eagle who soared above all of us. He was a man with a dream, a man with a vision. And our biggest dream of all, a dream that first seemed too fantastic to ever come true, was the dream that the territories of Papua and New Guinea could unite. <clears throat> not only unite, <clears throat> but unite as an independent country, a member of the world of nations, standing on our own two feet, equal to any in the world. Self-determination, responsibility for ourselves, independence. They said it could not be done, but St. Michael put together a crew of in 1972, 
government that would take us to our goal to independence. <clears throat> the crew included not only Somari but myself and John Caputin from the islands, Yambaki Oko from the highlands, John Guys from Millen Bay, Albert Marikiki from Gao. <clears throat> He took leaders from every part of the country to be, creating unity out of diversity. And that small group set sail for a goal that we could only dim, dimly see at that time. But with a clear vision of what we wanted desperately to achieve. And even then, there was no question who was the captain of the ship. <coughs> I said before, Sir Michael was born to soar and to take the people of Papua New Guinea to heights they had never dreamed of. <clears throat> but this was only because Sir Michael worked harder than most. I remember he worked late into the night, every night, often until midnight. I am reminded of the old saying attesting to making of great men. The heights reached by great men were not attained by sudden flight, but by the fact that they, while the companions slept, were toiling upward to the night. Sir Michael toiled late into the night, more nights than I've ever seen any man toil. Those first years from 1972 to 78 were the greatest years of creativity cooperation and commitment to opening Papua New Guinea to the world. Together we took on the greatest challenge in the history of any country, the challenge to be independent, to be free. There was much to do if we were going to achieve that, but we did it. We gained the recognition and endorsement of the United Nations. We created our own central bank, the Bank of Papua New Guinea, we bought out the Commonwealth Bank of Australia and established our own commercial bank, the PNGBC, and formally introduced our Kina and Toyo on 19th April 1975, five months prior to independence. <clears throat> we gained entry to the ADB, the World Bank, the IMF. We became a part of the world economic community. And through it all, Sir Michael was the captain of the ship of state. And he steered us safely to the haven of independence. And let us recognize what a huge achievement this was. Captain Somare was dealing with a land of thousand cultures in a land of over 800 languages a land in which relations among neighboring tribes and clans had historically been more competitive and even violent than peaceful and cooperative. Just think about it. The United Nations has only 193 countries, but the territories of Papua and New Guinea had nearly a thousand different nations a thousand different cultures. And almost every one of them with their own language. We have five times as many languages as there are countries in the United Nations. Now that is, that is, Mr. Speaker, Tower of Babel. That is what Michael Somare confronted in his quest to unite the territories of Papua and New Guinea into a single nation. That is what we all confronted, but Somare was the captain and he had to take control. And it was not only the internal challenges that Michael had to deal with the colonial power with Australia. And many in Australia were not ready for independence for Papua New Guinea, but led by Sir Michael, we coolly and calmly dealt with Australian leaders such as Gough Whitlam, Malcolm Fraser, Andrew Peacock, and others in the region 
moving us ever closer to independence. Those of you who were not there have no idea of the challenges. <clears throat> this country was not easy to construct, not easy to make. How many of you listening today remember the Bougainville Independence Movement, the Matangan Association, Papua Besena, the New Island Independence Group? Our country was splitting apart almost before it even came together. But our captain was Samara. And our captain was born to fly, to soar to his destiny, to soar to the destiny of Papua New Guinea. The constitution of an independent state of Papua New Guinea put greed aside and put the welfare of the nation, of the people of this nation first. Thanks to the leadership of Sir Michael, we constructed a country that is dedicated to the people and not to special interests. And thanks to St. Michael, this country was born in peace. At the same time that PNG was being created, many other countries around the world were being born in the pain of blood, in the agony, the torment, the anguish of war. But not Papua New Guinea. St. Michael guided this country of a thousand cultures to independence from its colonial master without the loss of a single life in the independence struggle. And that is why we are here in this chamber of the people today. We are here to thank God above for sending us a leader, a liberator, we had the skills and intellect to lead us peacefully into the new world of independence and self-reliance. But now the unthinkable has happened. Now, now, our captain is gone. We must carry on without him. Everything we have today, our freedom, our independence, our strong, proud country, we owe to St. Michael. But he can no longer join us in this celebration of freedom. I have called Samara our captain, Mr. Speaker, and that he was. It reminds me of what Walt Whitman had to say in a poem he wrote on the death of Abraham Lincoln. <clears throat> Whitman called Lincoln his captain and said, Oh, Captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is rung, is flung. For you the bugle trills, for you bouquets and ribbon wreaths. For you the shores they crowding, for you they call. The swaying mass, the eagle, the eager faces turning. I wish a Michael could rise and join us today. <clears throat> the nation is calling for him, for he was our captain. He will be sorely missed, but Speaker, Sir Michael will never die in our hearts. Each time we celebrate our country, each time we celebrate our independence, our freedom, we will celebrate Sir Michael Samari. We thank you, Sana, from the entire country. And thank you from me, your old friend, your old teammate. <clears throat> I thank my friend that we have made a good, good team. And I think our country has benefited from our efforts. We can ask no more than that. I will never forget the last time we were together on Independence Day in KVN last year. It was uh, ironic, Mr. Speaker, but I now know that on that day we were saying goodbye for the last time. I cannot think of a more appropriate day than Independence to say goodbye to a 
to my best partner in the creation of Papua New Guinea. We will never forget you, my brother, sleep then. Rest now. And before I conclude, I want to once again thank the Prime Minister and his government for giving such a dignified farewell to a great man. So let him rest in peace. God bless you. Thank <clears throat> you.